All right, so here we go again as far as this uh, appearance of diplomacy and uh, victory and success. Me personally, I don't really buy it. Maybe it's true. Maybe maybe I'm just too much of a of a pessimist um, about this because, like I said before, about the Syria deal with Russia uh, basically brokering it was that it's going to leave Syria without the ability to defend themselves, possibly, right? Maybe they got something better in the works. Maybe they know something that we don't. But it's going to make it easier for the West uh, to carry out airstrikes, mostly guided by Israel, um, without having to worry about the side effects of chemical weapons, uh, you know, attacking the, all those sites and stuff like that. It's making their, they're clearing the road for an, for the, an all-out attack on Syria if need be. Uh, Iran now is agreed to this deal uh, recently, which basically says that they're going to reduce their um, uh, higher enriched uranium, I think it's like 20 percent. And in order, and for them to do that, uh, because they do that, if they abide by it, that they're going to reduce sanctions. So this is a big money maker for Iran to do that. So again, I'm seeing the same thing as far as this is a victory. Uh, they both see it as a victory. Assad somehow and the government in Syria said that somehow they were victorious and that uh, this was a great thing for them. Israel enraged by a nuclear deal. So Israel's supposed to be enraged. So it was the greatest diplomatic victory of Iran, says I believe uh, uh, one of Iran's prime ministers or something like that said that greatest victory for Iran. Hezbollah says nuclear deal added to our nation's victories. So kind of like the best slave is the one that doesn't know he or she is a slave. Uh, the best victory is one that's actually a loss. Don't like I'm just throwing this out there to see what happens down the road. Israel slams Iran nuclear deal is a historic mistake. So historic victory, historic mistake. I wanted to mention that just kind of looking back, stepping back and looking at all of this, and we talked about the recent um, operations being carried out that were planned, you know, it was talked about before a month ago, or almost a month ago, three weeks ago, about um, carrying out operations against Iran. So then we had the embassy, Iranian embassy, uh, get blown up in Lebanon. You had a few political figures in Iran get picked off, I think abducted, assassinated so it, it almost makes me wonder that this is another good guy bad guy thing or tactic that was played uh, basically Russia being the, the good guy and the US being the bad guys and it seems like here that the US is playing the good guys and Israel is playing the bad guys this of course all helps out Israel if Iran follows through with it but somehow they're acting as if they disagree with this they don't approve of it I think this is all a show, uh, whether there's the bombings, the, the you know, assassinations, abductions against Iran, uh, to make it think that, oh, well, if Israel's against this and they're, and they're carrying this out, this deal with the West, then, then maybe we better go ahead and sign on to it, you know? And it's like I mentioned before, uh, Iran had a deal um, with, I believe it was just solely the East, Eastern countries, um, to scale uh, some nuclear activity down and those talks failed supposedly because of Israel and all of a sudden these ones pass I, I think if the Zionists and Jews want to get what they want uh, they'll get what they want when they want usually I think that's how it happens because uh, they're pretty slick at what they do another way to look at this and I, I wanted to this is mostly what I'm going to cover here because this is kind of a big deal is how I'm, how I'm seeing this as far as a victory, a loss, a, um, a mistake. I think it sucks because what we're talking about here is keeping the system going, uh, keeping the current power system uh, going, whether it's Russia. I, I, know, I know people like to act like, you know, the, the People's Republic of China is actually for the people, um, that the Russian Federation is for uh, ethnic Russians and, and the best, you know, the best for them. Yeah, they'll do some things uh, that are good for them, allow some liberties or enforce some type of social policy 
um, a lot better than, say, the United States or these other Zionist-occupied countries. But for the most part, the people don't really have a say, whether they want to call it you know, communism or democracy or, or fascism or whatever. They're not, they're not really having a say. They're not participating in, in, in anything. And so with this deal getting passed, uh, basically what we're looking at is an extension, a further extension of the financial and political system. Going back to this Fulford article, Benjamin Fulford, I know people say, oh, he's full of shit. Well, whatever. You got to pick and choose the little bits of information that you can get and try to connect the dots. That's what, quote, conspiracy theorists do, right? So... His argument was that what was happening, you know, with the uh, jets appearing in China, the J.P. Morgan Chase a bank being sold to the Chinese, all kinds of different uh, deals being made, liquidation of assets, trying to shore up cash. Remember, this was all surrounding the whole government shutdown. And so besides making these deals or brokering them with the Chinese, it says here, the best guess for what lies behind all of this is that the U.S. branch of the Feds sold the largest bank in the U.S. Chinese interest in order to keep their empire teetering on for a few more months. It says the other big source of emergency funding for the Feds appears to be Iran. So now we have, isn't it funny that all of a sudden, that all of a sudden we have this Iran thing if the government shut down we're talking about this? The sudden warming of the relationship between the G7 countries and Iran is leading to the unfreezing of $50 billion in Iranian money, according to the Mossad-linked website DEPCA. No doubt this money is helping the Feds uh, continue, I guess the Rothschilds banking dynasty as well, to continue their scam a bit longer. So the diversion is, is this is somehow about a nuclear, a nuclear threat. Uh, you have Kerry even saying it's not based on trust. Uh, you know, you have Natiano saying it's a big mistake. Natiano visiting Russia. This is uh, on November 20th, lobbying against the Iranian deal. So they don't want it, right? It's bad for them. Natiano sends security advisor to U.S. for the Iran talks. U.K. tells Israel not to disrupt Iran deal is defiant. Natiano comes under fire. He's like, are you effing kidding me? Seriously? Seriously, dude. Rothschild own the UK, they own Britain, they own their own little private country called Israel, and they basically own Wall Street um, at New York, right? New York, London, Tel Aviv, it's all the same. So we're just seeing a big, a big, a real big show, right? Uh, Congress threatens to derail Iran deal with new sanctions, so new sanctions, right? You got Zionist Chuck Schumer out there and Mendez and Whoever this guy, I'd never heard of him. Shambles, time for tougher Iran sanctions. Now's the time, right? But, you know, it's like, wait a minute here. You have top Israeli ex-officials saying that uh, they're praising the Iran deal. Yeah, that's right. The Israeli stock market soared, actually. We'll get into, get into that. So they're praising it, this pact, saying it achieved much more than Israeli attack on Iran could have. And that makes sense because they like using proxy terrorism and false flags instead of actually putting boots on the ground or, or attacking. I mean, Israel has no qualms with attacking. They've attacked Syria with airstrikes and that and Lebanon and that um, over and over. Nobody said anything. So, but my point is, is again, like Syria, it's like getting on your knees and putting your hands up and saying, see, we won. We defended ourselves as you're basically being subdued. Again, like Syria... They were being accused of carrying out these chemical attacks against civilians. Well, this wasn't so. We know that. So they're admitting to guilt, false admission of guilt, something they didn't do by agreeing to that deal. And then again with Iran, they're admitting to enriching uranium. Well, the whole time they're saying they weren't building any kind of nuclear weapons. Like I said, it would come back to where they, you know, they are, and they have the inherent right to do so. But... Uh, so now again, another mission of guilt. So again, double standards. Uh, you have John Kerry, who's also uh, actually part Jewish here. Uh, we know where his li loyalties lie, saying we do not recognize a right to enrich. So, but they allow Israel. So, another uh, Israeli analyst says Iran unlikely to breach interim deal. They didn't sign it to break it. Search this one Yadlin guy. A military strike could hardly achieve more. So again, this is kind of reiterating what we were saying. Iran announces plan to build two more nuclear power plants, new sites in accordance with government programs. Comes as the world powers in Tehran work to finalize this nuclear deal so they can go ahead and do it. 
and that's that's the split that we're talking about. This uh, spin in the media said it's very important Kerry had to say this so that he could appease the Israeli lobby, the U.S. Congress, the Wahhabi petrodollar lobby in the U.S., not to mention some neocons, uh, that's Jewish bankers and that, uh, in the U.S. as well, who are still very powerful. And Iran is different. They're saying we still have a right to enrich uranium, and this is correct, because they will keep enriching over the next six months. So the guy being interviewed, Pepe Escobar from RT, says uh, that I'm sure Iran won't break their promises. It's in their own interest to not break any promises. You have the French foreign minister saying that the European Union is willing to lift some Iran sanctions, and uh, they basically ruled out an Israeli strike. But all options are on the table. The U.S. envoy assures the Zionist Israel that attacking Iran is still an option. So hours after the deal, the ambassador is still talking up war. And why would they be doing this? Maybe that's the intention. Is you get rid of their arms, and then you go ahead and strike them. Yeah, and I could be wrong. And maybe I'm just not seeing uh, what's actually happening. Maybe this is a good thing. Israelis secretly inspect Saudi bases and possible staging ground for strikes against Iran from the 24th. Who knows if this is actually uh, accurate, but Israeli pers uh, personnel in recent days were in Saudi Arabia to inspect bases that could be used as a staging ground to launch attacks against Iran. The official said Israel, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Jordan, and other Arab uh, Gulf countries have been discussing the next steps towards possible strikes on Iran's nuclear sites. I only included it because we were talking about the uh, Saudi-Israeli uh, kind of alliance going on here. It can be a form of desperation. Uh, Saudi, remember this article? Saudi Arabia targeting Iran and Israel with ballistic missiles. This is new satellite photography shown by military experts in the Telegraph, and this was a while ago, actually, July 2013. But like I said, I think it's a loss because these countries, if they are actual sovereign nations, they're not going to be able to defend themselves as much or have much sway. Um, they'll have financial power, which is good, but these sanctions are punishing uh, uh, the people who don't have a say. And like I said, I wondered, oh, man, you know, what's, I, I never understand Russia or Iran. Are they actually part of the New World Order? Are they whatever? And I'm thinking, I'm like, well, as long as the people are not free and as long as the people... Um, are being forced into a system like they're living under, then it doesn't really matter. It's like in any other place on, in the, on the earth. It's about money, you know, follow the money. So how lobby interests are spinning the Iran nuclear deal. Israeli stock market soars on nuclear news. So, but Natiyama is saying, oh, this is a big mistake. Israeli markets gain, investors say Iran deal was not a mistake. U.S. stocks open higher on Iran deal, so 0.8%, eh, right, 0.08% in the U.S. The dying dollar, the Federal Reserve and the Wall Street assassinate the U.S. dollar, so you'll see that in, in, in these types of alternative media realms, that um, the dying dollar, right? So the system needs to collapse, and people want to keep it going. Somehow they're, they keep this fear going. It's right around the corner, right? Right around the corner. Oh, by the way, um, here's some gold. If you want to buy some gold and silver, you can buy it through me. I've got a commission. Relating this to China, China is quitting the U.S. dollar. We already knew this. I've covered it many, many times. The People's, ooh, the People's in China, the People's Bank of China says, no longer in China's interest to increase uh, foreign reserves. The country does not benefit any more from increasing its foreign currency holdings, adding to science policymakers will rein in the dollar purchases. Yeah, adding to science policymakers will rein in dollar purchases that uh, limit the yuan's appreciation. They've been stacking up record amounts of gold, though. And you have China's planned crude oil futures may be priced in one. I had a friend that said uh, Obama's job in office was to keep the petrodollar going. It, maybe his job now is because Saudi is weakening and the U.S. is having record amounts of the most leading exporter or creator, producer, sorry, producer of oil and natural gas. Maybe that's his job uh, to kind of transition into that. A different type of petrodollar, energy dollar. But I do think he's the first multicultural president. That's what he promotes. Um, China creates air defense zone over Japan-controlled islands. So like a no-fly zone. Japan's going to scale back their tank forces and focus on island defense. Ahead of the uh, elections in India, ex-British soldiers have been arrested there. Last month, India seized an armed ship owned by a U.S. security firm.
This is GGN, and thank you.